The Chicago Bears 2021 NFL schedule has officially been released, which means it's time to go through every single game on the 2021 schedule and give you guys a prediction for the Bears with a victory or a loss. So as you see on the whiteboard behind me, that's exactly what I'm going to do. We got all the games here and I'm going to go through every single one of them. Before I do so, if you are new to the channel, welcome guys. Make sure to go ahead and subscribe if you have not done so already. I do talk a lot of Bears on this channel. You don't want to miss out. Hit the bell icon. Make sure you're following me on all my social media platforms. And as always, let's get into it. All right. I got my markers here. Blue is going to be a dub. Red's going to be a loss. Couple disclaimers here before we do get started. We don't know who the Bears starting quarterback is going to be week one. It could be Andy Dalton. It could be Justin Fields. So to me, I will pretty much have to give you guys two separate predictions, one with Andy Dalton starting, one with Justin Fields starting. Now there's a potential that Andy Dalton can start and Justin Fields could come in. Again, there's just so many scenarios at play here that it's just going to get too complicated. So I'm just going to give you two predictions, Fields and Dalton. Then let's talk about the fact that the Chicago Bears schedule is the second hardest schedule in the entire NFL. I think the only team that has a harder schedule than them are the Steelers, which, again, I think the schedule is harder than the Steelers. But point being is, when you see the record prediction at the end, I don't want you guys to freak out because looking at the schedule, you should know it is going to be an insanely, insanely tough season because of the teams we're playing. Or we're talking about playoff teams. We're talking about Super Bowl teams. So just want to put that out there. All right. So with that being said, let's get into it. All right. Start week one against the Los Angeles Rams and folks look. The Rams were already an elite team. You know how much I respect Sean McVay and think highly of him. But now they add, upgraded that quarterback with Matthew Stafford. I mean, that's a huge upgrade over Jared Goff. And you still got the elite defense there with Aaron Donald on the line, Jalen Ramsey uh, on, on the outside. I mean, come on. They're, they're at home. The Bears have to play them in L.A. This is, uh, this is a loss. I'm sorry. I have to do it. Sunday Night Football is nice. We get a primetime game. Yeah, I like that. But, uh, yeah, this is a loss. All right, let's move on to the Cincinnati Bengals in Week 2. And this is a very winnable game for the Bears because the Bengals, again, not very good. Uh, they are rebuilding. I like Joe Burrow. I like Jamar Chase, who they added. I like T. Higgins. They've got some good offensive talent. But, again, rebuilding, not very good defensively. The Bears should be able to handle them. Let's go with a dub there. All right, Week 3, the Cleveland Browns at Cleveland. I know a lot of people are not big fans of the Browns or don't believe in them, but I do. They have a top three, top five roster in the entire NFL, folks. The Cleveland Browns are legit. I'm not a big fan of Baker Mayfield, but I'm a fan of everything else that the Browns have. So I think this is unfortunately a loss for the Chicago Bears in Cleveland week three. And by the way, if you are noticing, the Bears, for the very first time, I believe, in history, have a schedule where they are pretty much alternating home and road games. So there are no home, home, home games, away, away, away games. It's pretty much away, home, away, home, away, home throughout the entire schedule, which is kind of crazy. So just want to point that out. Let's go to week four, Detroit Lions. Thank God the Lions are on the schedule, folks, because they're not very good. And this is where we can get some dubs, no matter who the starting quarterback is, because the Lions are awful. They have Jared Goff, but they obviously who isn't very good. And... They don't have much talent but on both sides of the football. This is a dub for the Bears, especially at home. Are you kidding me? Yeah, let's go. Move on to the Raiders week five in L.A. Or excuse me, not L.A., Las Vegas. And the Raiders aren't very good either. All right. They didn't upgrade a lot in the offseason. They didn't get better. Uh, their defense isn't very good. Their offense is decent. Derek Carr is okay. Josh Jacobs is nice. But I think the Bears can beat the Raiders. I, I really do. Even on the road. I just don't think the Raiders are very good. I think they're highly overrated. They're only good when they play the Chiefs. Let's move on to the Packers. Week 6. Now, I know everybody's question is going to be, is Aaron Rodgers going to be the starting quarterback for the Packers in, uh, in that week? That's my question, too. So, it's just too hard for me to predict, right, what's going to happen with that. Will Aaron Rodgers get traded? Will he not? But look, folks, until Aaron Rodgers is not in a Green Bay Packers uniform, I have to assume that he is. All right, so let's just assume that it's Aaron Rodgers under center. If it is, then this is most likely a loss. We know the Packers are the better team. Uh, pretty much bringing everybody back on offense in Aaron Jones, Devontae Adams, and obviously you got the bad man, Aaron Rodgers, who won MVP last year. Now, again, he could be traded. 
And if, if so, then this is a, a W for the Bears. But assuming Aaron Rodgers is there, I'm going to say it's a loss. Again, they're at home. Could, could they pull it off? Yes. But God says it's a loss. Week 7 at Tampa Bay, the defending Super Bowl champions. This is a loss, folks. Look, I know we beat them last year, but it was a one-point game, a little bit of a fluky game, if you will. You, you know it was. It wasn't a convincing win. So uh, they're bringing everybody back. You're not beating the Bucs, especially in Tampa. So let's just be honest about it. All right, moving on to the 49ers in Week 8. This is a interesting game because, to me, the 49ers are interesting. Because they weren't very good last year, but that's because they were hurt. Two years ago, they were in the Super Bowl. Um, so, you know, which team is it, right? And Jimmy Garoppolo, he's probably going to be the starter. I don't see Trey Lance starting. I, I'm pretty sure he won't play this entire year. And so the 49ers are a, a, an interesting team. They have a lot of talent. And, and George Kittle and Debo Samuel on the defense side of the football. You got Nick Bosa. So I like what the 49ers have. I really do. If we're assuming Andy Dalton starting here, which we are, this is going to be a loss, folks. Could they pull it off? Yeah, but I'm going to say it's a loss. All right, week nine against the Pittsburgh Steelers, and I believe this is on Monday Night Football. Um, this is a loss. I'm sorry, folks. This is a loss. Uh, the Steelers, I still think, are an elite team. I still think Big Ben has a little bit left in the tank. Uh, their defense is very, very good. Their offense is solid. They got weapons for days. That's a loss, especially in Pittsburgh. All right, listen, I don't want you guys to freak out because I got four straight losses here for the Bears, folks. Last year, they lost six straight games. All right, so again, it happens, and it's an insanely tough schedule. All right, let's move on, and then we'll revisit this. And actually, it's not even going to be four straight. It might be five straight because week 11, after a bye in week 10, you play the Baltimore Ravens, and that's going to be a loss, folks, because the Ravens are a playoff team. They're very good. Lamar Jackson, that rushing attack. I mean, that's, it's an unstoppable at times. This might be a, a Super Bowl team. They're clearly better than the Bears. They are. This is a loss. All right. Let's move on to the Detroit Lions. And thank God we got the Lions on our schedule. This is a dub on Thanksgiving. No explanation necessary. Let's move on. Week 13, the Cardinals. Now, this is an interesting game. Cardinals, to me, are kind of weird because... At times, they feel overrated. At times, they feel underrated. Did they improve a little bit? Sure. They added J.J. Watt, A.J. Green. Okay, fine. But are they better than the Bears? I mean, I like Kyler Murray. I think they are. So to me, yeah, probably they are better than the Bears. But we are at home. Could we beat them? Sure. Uh, but it's it's tough to see. All right? Let, let's, let's say this is an L, and then we come back. All right? Green Bay Packers in week 14, Sunday Night Football. Again, if Aaron Rodgers is there, folks, this is a loss. I'm sorry. The Packers are just a better team. Um, and if it's Andy Dalton, I just don't see it. All right. Minnesota Vikings, week 15 at home, Monday Night Football. I think this is a victory. Look, we play the Vikings very tough every year. Now, the Vikings have a good roster, but it didn't change much. And for the most part, I think we have been... We've had their number over the past couple of seasons with Mitchell Trubisky and even Nick Foles put up a fight against them. So to me, I think we can beat the Vikings uh, for sure uh, at home. All right, let's move on to the Seattle Seahawks in Seattle. Now, the Seahawks' defense isn't very good. Their offense is elite. We know it's Russell Wilson, DK Metcalf, Tyler Lockett, and that passing attack. Uh, so could we beat the Seahawks? Sure, but I'm probably going to say this is a loss. All right. Moving on to the New York football Giants. Now, the Giants did improve a lot this year on offense. Saquon Barkley, Kenny Galladay. Uh, they drafted Kadarius Toney, the wide receiver. You got Sterling Shepard there. Evan Ingram's nice. I mean, a lot of talent, but defensively not very good. I don't trust Daniel Jones. I think the Bears win this game. And then finally, close it out against the Minnesota Vikings on the road at Minnesota. Look, I got to give the Vikings some respect. I do think they're a solid team, so I'm going to say this is a loss. So... I know it's a lot of losses. Don't freak out. Hang with me here. Let's tally it up here. We got one, two, three, four, five, six. Six wins, okay? Now, I will say one thing. If we flip this Arizona Cardinals again, which I'm very not very uncertain about, that would be seven wins. So essentially, let's do that. I'm going to flip this game here. I think there's a game that we can potentially take. And that would put the Bears record at 7 and 10 with Andy Dalton. Now, 
what would change with Justin Fields if Justin Fields is starting? Well, I believe if Justin Fields is starting, then we can take the 49ers game. So I'm going to say this one could be a dub with Justin Fields. Um, I think we can take the Vikings game. We can take both of them if Justin Fields is starting. I think that's very possible. And that would pretty much, yeah, that's pretty much it. I don't see it with the Packers. And then the other games are still very tough. And at that point, that would put us at a record of 9-8. and eight. So, basically, if it's going to be Andy Dole on their center all year, 7-10 and 10 is what I have the Bears record. Remember, 17 games this year. And if it's Justin Fields, I see 9-8. and eight, All right? I Obviously, I see an improvement there. So, to me, again, it depends what happens with the quarterback situation. Now, you might be thinking, Fies, what if it's half and half? Well, yeah, maybe just go with eight wins and eight and nine at that point, right? So, to me, folks, it's just a very tough schedule. It just is. As much as I want to be optimistic, it's a gauntlet. Just take a look at this. All right, I'll, I'll literally go through it with you. All right, let me go. Playoff team Rams, playoff team Browns. Uh, playoff team Packers, uh, Super Bowl content, uh, defending champs, and playoff team Bucks, playoff team 49ers, playoff team Steelers, playoff team Baltimore Ravens, a potential playoff team Cardinals. Remember, we, they almost make the playoffs. We made it over them. Playoff team against Packers, playoff team Seahawks, playoff team potentially in Minnesota, and even the Giants could be a potential playoff team. That's how many damn good teams are on the schedule. So, again, as much as I want to pick the Bears to win a lot of games, I got to be realistic. And that's what I'm doing. So there you have it, folks. Let me know what you guys think. Leave a comment down below if you agree or disagree. As always, thanks for watching.